start okay so uh, first of all thank you uh, dr prin basis for this opportunity so i'm joining from japan so and my talk is on uh, assistive technology for revision rehabilitation uh, in terms of accessibility affordability opportunity challenges and feasibility so as we know that this is uh, rp center so in rp center we are uh, a team uh, working for the in the community of thalmology so in this we do have a vision rehabilitation and training at training lab so these are the lab and this is a team particularly primarily focused on this uh, assistive technology training so this is the outline first we should know what is assistive product and what is assistive technology so in the medical science this is a relatively newer term so many of us are not very much keen like no not aware the detail uh, definition uh, about this uh, assistive product and assistive technology so the second is who need assistive product and magnitude of requirement in terms of uh, uh, vision impairments and the classification of assistive product uh, especially uh, in the context of vision impairment and uh, assistive technology visual impairment indicators that is accessibility affordability challenge opportunity so this uh, important terms so i will be highlighting uh, based on the case study that we conducted in delhi and the first thing for the third the second last is addressing those challenges there is a school boys model so i have one or two slides and uh, finally a quick uh, glance of this uh, repeat assistive technology assessment study in india so coming to the assistive technology definition so it is very simple definition assistive product is a is a external product it's not an internal okay so it is maybe equipment maybe software maybe hardware whose primary function is to improve the individual functioning or to minimize the limitation of the, of, of, of of activities of human activities and when you said assistive technology it includes the product as well as the system so when you what do you mean by system system means so if someone needs assistive product so you cannot just uh without assessing could you just give okay use this assistive product for you it's not it should not be in that way so system in this there's an assessment first and evaluation and then either a recommendation or a prescription so there has to be a uh, standard you know uh, protocol uh, while i mean uh, you know uh, prescribing or recommending recommending assistive product and uh, it also includes the training because it's not like a medicine so if you ask to someone to uh, <clears throat> like a paracetamol so they can just uh, you know like swallow the paracetamol with a cup of glass but assistive technology product it's not like that so training and retraining that has to be incorporated while talking about assistive technology and maintenance also and repairing of course is very very important repairing so assistive products are not device you know to treat the uh, cure the problems of the human pro human and so assistive product basically the conventionally it should be used by a person with some form of difficulties or having some limitation and person who needs the assistive products who are those persons first of all the top most person who need assistive products are the largest group are person with disabilities so here in the context of ophthalmic science we have a low vision and a blind so they definitely require the assistive product and uh, the older population so they also needs the assistive products so that means over time so in one point of time so either you and for all of us we will be requiring assistive product uh, so so either maybe temporary or maybe permanent so and then person with chronic health debilitating disease like chronic health problems so person having say rheumatoid arthritis and other health problems so they also they also need assistive product to improve their body functioning and the person who you know or come with the accident and injuries uh, so they might they may also require temporary or permanent assistive product so these are the range of uh, uh, users as far as assistive product is concerned so magnitudes as far as blind is concerns around uh, 23 million people uh, you know uh, when you say the severe visual impairments uh, not severe six uh, as for the rap survey six less than 618 to 660 so approximately 23 million people required and uh, when the blind is considered then around 5 millions and the coming to low vision so uh, apex studies around 13.8 millions and similar finding was reported in latest rap survey and some classification of assistive products so so this is a, a classification so uh, this classifications uh, being you know uh, uh, presented after you know series of meeting with a special educator with the uh, schools for the uh, students study in schools for the blind and uh, uh, school you know uh, like Uh, device uh, the, the the person who 
provide training to the students in school for the blind. So they said, so she's products, the definition as such, there's no specific classification, uh, standards classification, but this classification uh, is based on the first the table one is based on the, uh, the body sense being used. There is visual base, tactile base and sound base. So since no, so some of the SSC products, so we need some <coughs> visual function. So still we do have a visual value SSC product, for example, the large print book and optical and non-optical magnifier. So optical magnifier definitely is a visual based SSC product. And a tactile base is like your mobility canes and braille books. These are tactile base and sound base is a and liquid sensors and color detectors and not takers. There are some, some of the SSC products. Uh, you know, uh, use some uh, tactile techniques. And coming to the activities, uh, again, there's special educators, then they said, uh, the students at school for the blind, and even in a person living in a community, so there are a series of activities. So based on the activities, that, uh, the, the, the assistive technology, it can be classified as, you know, our first is a pre-academic learning, particularly for the students, children, and reading, and writing, mathematics, science, and orientation and mobility, and games and leisure, these are the, there are SCC products uh, for the blind people so who can enjoy the games and laser using products and daily living activities. There are some of the SCC products. So these are classifications provided by those, you know, by the special educators. So after a series of consultation meeting with them. So another classification based on the evolutions, we have a traditional SCC product. There is a magnifier in Braille and electronic magnifier. And we have a mainstream SCC device. There is a smartphone, tablet. So now it is smartphones and tablets that are SCC products. So there's a mainstream. So we say it's a mainstream assistive devices. And the state-of-the-art assistive technology, this is all came like smart glasses and bioptics. So this is a state-of-the-art medical uh, assistive devices. These are all head-mounted uh, display devices. These are either AI-based or either AR-based. So I'm not going into detail. These are products we do have in our uh, clinics. And coming to the, see, uh, simplify, sim more simplification based on the table one that I have uh, explained. That is the first we can classify uh, assistive technology into the two uh, major categories. One is the bed and TED. Bed means visual based assistive products. That means based on the visual skills. That means those last print book and those magnifier. So magnifiers is like SSC product to be used by a person who have some uh, visual function. So that is uh, a base vision equity less than 618 to up to 160. So, so for them, we classify as a bed and a person who uh, you know, uh, have, who has uh, BCBA is less than 160 to the no no light perception. So for them is we need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, classify that that SSC product based on the visual substitution skills. So for example, Desi books, Braille books. So for them, so a person uh, who doesn't have any eyesight, so they still can use this Braille book and keyboard and Desi book. Desi book is a digital accessible information system. This is an audio book. So, so this is this classification. So uh, we do have a range of visual impairment starting from a low vision and blindness and function low vision and for the AT user. So as I indicated earlier in the slide, so we do have a low vision up to 160 and less than 160. So why this classification is important? Because if we prescribe a magnifier, if a person whose vision, whose BCBA is less than 160 blindness, so the person cannot use very productively. Uh, for the short-term reading also is very difficult for them. So we preferably uh, recommend to use the tactile and sound-based SSC products, so particularly for the students. So that's why this classification based on the, uh, the I mean, uh, BCVA, so low vision to 160 and less than 160 blindness. So very quickly, so as I said, person having less than 160 blindness, if we prescribe the last print book or optical magnifier, so it's not useful for them. So, so... So for that, so we need to change to the uh, tactile and sound based SSC products to be able to use productively. But despite of, despite uh, having said that, so we should not we should not uh, 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 you know uh, discourage not to use that uh, the low vision devices. So using dual you know uh, and this bed and tech, tech person who can still use this uh, you know that uh, magnifying or those bed. So they can still, uh, we can encourage them to use it. And this is uh, some of the research for the, uh, do we do it in the in school for the blind Delhi. So now there's a case study. So this is very, very important in schools. So we conducted study in uh, school for the blind. So there are uh, including uh, in, uh, which includes 22 schools for the blind in Delhi. 
So when you see the finding, so screen reader, so we do have a screen reader that is a uh, NVDA and JOS and Supernova, they're computer screen readers. So very few schools have it. So most of the schools do not have the screen readers. So that means they're, they're not providing computer training. And coming to the smartphone accessible applications, only eight schools out of this 22, so they provide you know some kind of uh, you know awareness about the available smartphone accessible uh, you know uh, apps, and the simple mobile phones like uh, for the uh, you know as a uh, for low vision students, so only ten uh, schools uh, they do they have they have this uh, simple mobile phone, and Desi books as I said audio books only thirteen out of twenty two schools they have and talking was only nineteen schools <laughs> we include that. Uh, we include uh, 51 different associate products. So, uh, so, so coming to next, uh, this is just example of case study. So this is case study is very interesting finding in the next slide, see here. So these are quite a range of activities can be conducted, can be done by the smartphones. Uh, so starting from the communication, health consultation, information on COVID-19. So using this accessible apps by a blind person, so they can use a smartphone, but challenge here is so the blind person, they said, so there are certain things uh, that uh, uh, text in the smartphone which cannot be read by the screen reader, for example, CAPTCHA. So particularly they said CAPTCHA cannot, cannot be read by the uh, screen reader. So that challenge those uh, faced by the person with visual disability. And this is the uh, RP Center study. So uh, in the OPD itself, so here uh, we include uh, 42 assistive devices in the study. So, and interestingly, the finding is out of these 42 assistive devices, only two, uh, you know, uh, had a good awareness. There is a, a optical magnifier and working uh, long can. So rest of the 40 devices, you know, they, they are poor awareness. Uh, even the users also. So there are poor uh, users of the uh, devices. Now coming to the challenge. So see that uh, the challenge they face in terms of accessing the assistive product so is non-availability to buy. So there are lack of, you know, availability of the associate products, even though they know the associate product, okay, this associate product will be useful for me. So there are no place to buy associate product. And some people uh, lack of felt nets, uh, basically for those low vision persons. So they said, you know, we don't need it, associate product. And financial concern is another very important uh, barrier to access the associate product. And this is the tele rehabilitation service, this is an interesting finding uh, conducted in our, again, in our center. So uh, there are callers, this, is the, this study conducted during the COVID-19 pandemic. So when you see the smartphone on, on so out of this uh, number of callers, 47, and they do not have 54, they don't have a smartphone. So that means they uh, may call us with the help of either family members or some caregiver, yeah, some school, you know, uh, staying, a student staying in the hostel. So they took help from the uh, warden or otherwise uh, hotel hostel caregiver. And uh, in terms of awareness of accessible apps, so then, so only 20, only 20 of them, they are they're aware of accessible apps. So, and 81 of them, they are not aware. This is a schools, uh, based, uh, basically uh, the respondents, they are from the schools, students. <laughs> and this is another, uh, to, to, to address those challenges in terms of accessing. So this is a model supported by the WHO that improving accessible technology access to students with low vision and blindness in Delhi. So for here, we, uh, have started in two schools for the blind in Delhi. So we open uh, at left, uh, at left. One is in uh, 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 school for girls, uh, school for the blind. Or one is uh, the second one is the boys school for the blind. So the schools are, you know, initially they are very much reluctant. So they, because teachers are also, are also not aware of this, what is assistive technology and then what is the use for it. Uh, so, so many, I mean, questions, uh, I mean, uh, they ask before we start this, uh, this AT lab in school. So later on, they can, we convince him and we had a meeting uh, many times, many times. Then we, uh, luckily, we have started this training uh, about assistive technology for visual impairment, particularly study in this, uh, in the, in two schools. So later on, also, we, we, are, we are looking forward to expand to other schools as well. And this is the, I mean, a quick chart we use in the school. So as I said, the students we trace, one is less than 618 to 160, that is called category one. And second one is less than 160, uh, that is blindness, that is category two. So in category two, we recommend this bed and uh, uh, the bed and tactile uh, sound based product. But the category one, so we encourage to use uh, those uh, visual based associate product. 
So this good view of data study, the last uh, few slides. So this is a submission studies and uh, we conducted in, in India. So uh, covering eight districts. So these are findings here. So when you see prevalence of assistive technology uh, that measures, the data measures use need met and met needs and barrier. So here, uh, this, this is the need, the, the prevalence of need is 24.5%. And use is 19.9%, and med need and admin need, admin need of assistive technology, any type of assistive technology. So it is 8%. So when you look at this graph, see, uh, so the severe a person with having severe difficulties. So the unmet needs is like sudden and it's increased. Uh, that means person having severe difficulties, they are not able to access uh, assistive technology for their use. So it increased up to 52.3%. Uh, <clears throat> This is serious concern in our country. And this is the range of assistive product and then spectacles and low vision devices and the canes, they are the maximum use during the survey. This is the other assistive products. So uh, we, I'm not going uh, detail into this because this is quite complex. And this is the barrier to access the challenge. The first is not available. See, this is 4.5% and do not know about the assistive product and others and cannot afford is around about 37, 37%. Uh, so this is a huge problem and uh, <clears throat> and the lack of support also, of course. The maximalists cannot afford the financial problems. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.